Coming up next, what you should do if your boss doesn't like you. And I'll tell you about the most important friend you need to have. We'll take your calls and your chats. And it all starts right now. I am coming to you live from Ramsey Studios in Nashville, and you're joining a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do it, and how to get there. We're talking about meaningful work. That's the destination. Some call it the dream job, but it's not just about the dream job. It's the dream job is the dream job because of what it allows you to do to truly give yourself away, your unique talent, your unique passion to fulfill your unique mission, talent, passion, mission. That is the formula where talent is used to perform passion work that you really love to produce results that matter deeply to you, fulfilling your mission. That's where you are in the role that you were created to fill. And it is your sweet spot. It just feels like everything is natural. And it is because you were created to fill a unique role. That means you were needed. You must do it. And that's why the Ken Coleman Show exists to help you figure out what that role is and then how to step into the role and maximize the role. That's what we do here. So excited to have you with us couple ways to engage, 844-747-2577, 844-747-2577 is the toll-free number. You can also submit your question in the chat room next to the video window that you're watching right now. Make those short and sweet, very specific so that I can answer those to the fullest extent. And you can email the show, ask at kencoleman.com. While you're watching, we'd love for you to give us a thumbs up right below the video window. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. We're growing like crazy. And as you like each episode, whether you're watching live right now or later, and when you hit that like button, YouTube pays attention to that, and they are putting us out there. They promote us. YouTube does it. It's their algorithm. But the more likes and subscribers we get, the more they promote us to people that are searching for these type of topics. And so you are a huge part of our growth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's talk about an article here that I saw that I thought was just, this is really good. And and we get these calls from time to time. And it's rare that I will take an article like this that is opinion-based, not data-based, and share it. But I thought it was spot on. It's uh, written by Leanne Davey, Harvard Business Review. What do you do if your boss doesn't like you? (laughs) Some of you are going, man, leave. Well, that is an option. But there are are a couple things here to really think through. And, And what I like about what Leanne Davey does in this article is she really addresses the source of why you think your boss doesn't like you. And we're not assuming that It's actually true what you believe, but that's what you feel. All right, more on that in a moment. So the first thing is trust. If trust is the problem, and and, and I believe that trust is is really at the core of this feeling, if you feel like your boss doesn't like you. And trust we're talking about here is not that they think you are a bad person or that you're unethical, because if that's the case, they're probably going to let you go pretty quickly. It's really about getting the job done. And and trust is really confidence here. They don't trust that you are going to execute on the job. They don't feel that the competence level is high enough. That's really what we're talking about here. And so if that's the case, you start by clarifying their expectations. Now, I talk about this on the show all the time. The key to getting promoted is to A, know your role, being clear. B, accepting your role, that's attitude. C, maximizing your role, that's effort. So I talk about this all the time. So let's go back to that first point. That's what she's saying here. You've got to make sure that you and your leader have the same expectations. Are you clear? She's done a bunch of research on this and has found that a lot of times the issue is is that the leader hasn't made themselves clear to the worker what is clearly expected. 
So this is poor leadership and poor leadership exists everywhere. So you have got to make sure that you lead your leader by simply going to them and going, hey, I want to make sure that we are on the same page as it relates to expectations. So once you feel that you are clear on expectations, you need an all out effort to show them that you are in fact competent enough to do the job and they can then rely on you. That's when trust comes back. And then the second issue, connection. If you and your boss don't feel a natural connection, if your boss doesn't have a connection with you, you're going to see it pretty easily. The first is body language, eye contact. This is uh, from communication expert Nick Morgan. Your subconscious is very good at picking up cues from eye contact and other body language. So if your boss is making significantly less eye contact with you than others, that's a pretty good sign that they don't feel connected to you. Another measure is when your boss seems to be avoid spending time interacting with you. So if you want to strengthen that connection, start by engaging more conversations about work. Don't try to overdo it with the hobbies and the sports and the food and the music topics. We already got a connection issue here. Don't force it. And so start by engaging with conversations about work and then pay attention to what topics get the boss's attention and energy. So then you can begin to say, oh, I see that they really love to talk about this particular television show, you know, and you begin to, begin to build the connection. Now, why is this important? There's tons of research out there that shows that your relationship with your boss is one of the most important factors in your overall experience at work. I would say to that, duh, of course, the research verified that. I think we all understand that. And it's really important that you don't have to be best friends, but you need a really healthy, let's call it healthy relationship with your leader. And you have a lot to say about that. So don't put it all on them and don't assume that they don't like you if they're not trusting you a whole bunch and there's not a great connection. It may not have anything to do with whether they like you or not. And so you got to be a big boy and a big girl and step into this. 844-747-2577, 844-747-2577. Coming up later in the program, I'm going to get into describing the one friend. Like, this is the most important friend to have. Uh, I'm a big, 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 big proponent of having the right peers in your life. But I want to talk about one specific type of friend that you need in your life and you don't have them, you better go get them. We'll tell you more about that later. But first, Francis is going to start us off in Seattle, Washington. Francis, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thank you for taking my call. You bet, Francis. How can I help? Um, so I have a nine to five that I'm struggling with, um, but I've read your book. I've taken the financial coaching certification course, and I feel like I've sort of found my calling. Mm -hmm. But my struggle is um, I'm starting to realize it's going to take a lot of work to get the coaching business off the ground. Yep. But I feel like I'm not giving it proper time and attention um, since my nine to five is pretty taxing and it's high visibility. I struggle to do well in it anyway before adding coaching to my plate. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought I'd like to leave this job by the end of the year, uh, which point I should be debt free. But for the six to nine months of expenses, I, I had the idea to do something less mentally taxing, like Instacart, which I'm kind of doing now anyway. Mm -hmm. Just wondering if that's a bad idea. Should I stay at my job until well, I have that six to nine months of expenses? Yes, absolutely. I would add, okay. or, or here's the other thing, or just replace your current nine to five with another nine to five that is less taxing and it's just a day okay. job. So if, yeah. if you can make a lateral move, and we're just going to go from yuck, 9 to 5, to okay, 9 to 5. That'll work, right? Just yeah. okay. Yeah. Because you know you're a short timer, and your your attitude's going to be very good because you go, oh, at least it's not a yuck, 9 to 5. It's an okay, 9 to 5, which is a lot better than yuck. And I've managed to, to stay on course financially. I've not taken a dip at all. I'm still going to be debt-free. And this this okay day job is going to get me to my six to nine months of expenses so that I can go full time, um, you know, on the Instacart uh, and financial coaching. That's your combo until we eventually get to full time financial coaching. So I want you to take your okay. time uh, and just be really smart, which you are. But don't there's no need for you to take risks because it's going to take time to build up the financial coaching anyway. And so yeah. I would not be discouraged by, well, I can only do 10 sessions a month and I'm making that up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it is, it is you killing those 10 sessions 
with those five people or whatever or three people um, that will build the business. See, any type of coaching business is 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 got to be built on the actual sessions themselves. You've got to take a person from A to K, from K to Z, right? <laughs> you got to take them there, whatever that course is, whatever that that journey looks like, and yeah. and so you have to win with those clients so that they're out becoming your evangelists and telling other people, oh my gosh, uh, let me tell you about what Francis did for me in my in my in my life, coaching me on my money, and so a successful coaching business is not going to take off. Yeah. Just not. It is built one brick at a time. And and so take the pressure off. I didn't say that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Don't, don't be discouraged by that. Be encouraged. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, now, yeah. there are things you can do to accelerate the business. And one of the things you need to do is being hooked up with Chris. The, 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 our team here, our financial coach, Master Training, they will coach mm-hmm. you on how to grow your business. They're not, they're, you know what I'm saying? And and so that's a potential. Once you get out of debt, I'd really look into that. Um, and I'm kicking that idea around here. I'll just tell you, I'm going to let it slip here because I haven't decided. But I know there are a lot of people that are listening right now or watching that are career coaches and they'd like to grow their business and, or they would want to get into career coaching and, and guide men and women like I do here on the air. And so, you know, the idea is, is every coach needs a coach. Everybody needs a coach. Tiger Woods needs a coach. Roger Federer needs a coach. Um, and, 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 and so the point I'm making is um, you have an opportunity here at Ramsey Solutions to get coached on how to grow your coaching business. But it's going to take time. Now, you might get to a point where you figure out six months in or 12 months in or 18 months in, wait a second, I've got the one-to-one, but now I can, I'm going to start doing webinars and see if I can – you know, make in, in in one 90 minute webinar what I make in a day's worth of coaching. You know, that yeah. that that's the type of thing you will eventually start thinking through. Okay. But uh mm-hmm. understand you better have a long view on this. And I think you do. So yeah, that's what you need to do. Yeah. You need to stay stable financially. And and here's the key. I I, I want to say this to Francis, but to everybody else that's watching that's in this situation. You will be surprised how you can put up with a yuck day job certainly an okay day job if you have got your mind where it needs to be which is i'm i'm focused on the long haul i'm focused on the long haul anybody that's ever had to lose weight or anybody that's ever trained for a marathon or something you're talking about months and months of training you're talking about months and months of changing your eating lifestyle and your exercise lifestyle to get to the point where you transform your body you sign up for that and you go it's going to take some time But the reason that you have the discipline and the diligence is because of the focus, which is the end result. Same exact deal here. If you're trying to start your own business and you're going to have to do it on the side, same mental focus as losing weight uh, or training yourself for some type of race or or, or getting through college, whatever it is, it's, it's, I got to do this for a season and do it this way so that I can ultimately do what I want to do. Embrace it. And the sooner you embrace it, um, I think you'll find the easier it is to deal with the day job. And, and you just have a better attitude. And I got to tell you, it's always about, you know what? Focus on what the day job is allowing you to do. That'll change your attitude real fast. 844-747-2577. Devin is up next in Santa Rosa, California. Devin, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. How's it going? Devin, I'm living the dream. What's going on with you? I'm living the dream as well. Good. Um, so so I had a question for you. Me and my wife are out here in Santa Rosa, and uh, we both have uh, good jobs that we enjoy, uh, but we eventually want to move to Idaho. We do have a baby on the way, so we're not looking to move in the short term. We kind of have a while before we uh, are going to be ready to move. But my main question is, she's a teacher, so she'll, she won't have trouble finding where she wants to be, and she's from that area. Um, but I don't know how I would reach out or kind of get my name out there to 
um, set myself up for a good career or a, a job that I want to be in uh, from a few states away. So okay. I'm wondering if there's something I can do to yeah. like, uh, you know, get my name out there. Yeah, absolutely. What's the timeline? B- ballpark. Um, I say the soonest would be a year, and but I mean we always say like at the latest you know, three to four years. All right. So let's just say three years. Okay. Let's operate on that time. Okay. All right. That's fine. Uh, because it, 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 everything I'm going to tell you would work in one year, but I want you to realize how much time you actually have. You're so far ahead of the game just by making this phone call today. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, Thanks. first we got to determine what it is you want to do. Well, what is it that you mm-hmm. want to do? What kind of work do you want to do? What What do you feel like? This is this is my role. I want to fulfill this role, um, and mm-hmm. these are the places in the marketplace that I'm interested in doing that. What is the answer to that? Well, so I've always I've always been drawn to management and to being uh, to leadership. Great. So leader and is the role you were put on this earth yeah. to lead. That's your role. Mm-hmm. So here's the good news about being a leader. That's not industry specific. It can be, right? But it doesn't have to be. So now let's dream a little bit. So you you want to fill the role of leader, all right? Where in the marketplace would you love to lead? Um, I've I've been in sales for years, so I think I would enjoy uh, great leading Leading sales. Sales and all right. Is there an industry uh, or a product uh, or a service that really intrigues you you go boy if i'm if i'm leading a sales team to sell this service or this product boy i'm telling you i feel like i'm stealing uh you know i'm not sure i mean doesn't matter i've I've definitely i've always been a i've been a big i've been a big sports guy my whole life so it'd be really cool to do something in that environment but i've just noticed in my career it's never really been a high priority for me to be in the sports field Okay. Um, just as long as I'm doing something, leading people, and, and okay, great. good at it, I've I've enjoyed it. Okay, great. So this is wonderful, folks. Uh, th- th- this I'm so glad you called, Devin, because some people get locked up on the specifics, and and they don't step back. And if you walk through the methodology, folks, of what I teach, which is look at what Devin does best: hard skills, soft skills, the work that he loves to do. And the results that matter deeply to him, and he's come up with, I just want to lead. I want to lead. I want to lead a sales team specifically. And and that's exciting to Devin. So now, Devin, this here's what this boils down to. It's kind of wide open. Because if you had said yeah. to me, Ken, I want to sell technology services. Great. So I would say, all right, so where, where in Idaho are we looking at going? Is it one city, two cities, three cities? Let's make a list of the cities we're open to going to. If you already know the city, then we've locked it down to one city. We go, all right, who's selling technology services in that city? That's where I would have taken you. In this situation where you're wide open, you're looking for sales management, sales leadership positions in the area that you want to go to. If it's one city, great. If it's four cities, great. And you're looking for good companies that obviously will have opportunities at some point between now and three years from now to hire leadership positions in sales. And you're starting to go, okay, what are these companies selling? Uh, who stands out to me uh, as it relates to the product or the service? Like, oh, I could get really excited about that. More excited about this than this one over here. And this is just good old-fashioned research. And the good news is your wife's got a base there on some level. Mm-hmm. Are you looking to move right. back to the city that she's actually from? Uh, no, she's from Twin Falls. We're looking to move to the Boise area. All right. Does she have, or her family, or her friends from Idaho? Uh, you know, she's got to have some connection to some people in Boise, correct? Yeah, I do too, because that's where we met. I lived there for a year. Oh, okay. Well, so bro, you're good. Good grief. You got a <laughs> you got a minimum one year runway, maximum three right. to four years. Uh, start yeah. talking to everybody in Idaho if you haven't already. My guess is you already have. You've already told them, hey, somewhere between one and four years, we're coming back, right? Yeah. Start yeah. telling everybody and say, look, I love leading sales teams. Yeah. You know any good companies that'd be really good targets, great culture, great product, great great financial situation. They're healthy companies. 
how hard is it for you to figure this out, Devin? It's not hard at all, right? Right. Okay, bro. Yeah, I so then vacations. The other get to Idaho. The other make connections while you're there. You follow me? I know I'm not yeah. done teaching yet. I know you're dying to say something, but I just want to make sure you understand. <laughs> this is just get after it, bro. Start identifying yeah. companies and identifying a connection to somebody in those companies and try to meet those folks, whether it's a Zoom call, phone call. Uh, next time you're in Idaho, go in a day early and have coffee. All right, go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, I guess the other thing was is that I don't have any experience. Or, well, I have a sliver of experience in management because the last company that I worked for, they moved me into an interim district manager role with a verbal promise of moving me into a full-time district manager. And then when COVID happened, they pulled back on that, which is understandable. And yeah. then I ended up getting laid off. Doesn't matter. Got hired by a new company, and now I'm kind of starting from ground zero again. Doesn't matter. You have some, and stop calling it a sliver, because on your resume, you're going to show where you've had some management experience. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Now, here's the deal. I didn't say that you had to necessarily try to get into a sales management position because because you might just need to go get in sales for yeah. a really good company and crush it. And all the while you're crushing it, you're telling them, eventually I want to move into a leadership position. Here's what I'm doing. I'm reading these books. I listen to these podcasts. I've taken this webinar. I've gone to this conference. What else do you think I need to do that would prove to you that I've got the leadership potential? And so... Same, everything I said is still the same. It's just, I didn't realize until you told me that you didn't have a, a bunch of, of leadership experience, but it doesn't matter. Do you know what it takes to be yeah. a good leader? Yeah. I can tell you two things. Number one, you got to be a good follower. And yes. then number two, you got to learn how to serve. Servant leadership. There it is. Serve people. Help people yeah. win. That's the key to leadership. If you're leading a sales team, your whole goal is, how do I help? the women and men on my team that are selling meet their goals and beat their goals and help them move up. That's servant leadership. Not as difficult as it sounds. It's really simple, yeah. actually. <laughs> so you got this, yeah. Devin. I really appreciate the call. 844-747-2577 to the chat room we go. Julie writes in, hey, Ken, how can I leverage LinkedIn to grow my network and apply the proximity principle. For those of you that are new to the program, the proximity principle was an idea that came out of the show, and it says this, in order to do what you want to do, you've got to be around other people who are doing it and in places where it, the work, is happening. So it just allows you to, to just go, oh, well, who are some people that are successful in, in what I want to do? Who are they? Where are they in my local area? And how can I make a connection with them? Where are the places, the companies, the the gatherings online or the chat rooms or whatever, where the professionals that, that are doing what I want to do uh, are conferences around the things I want to do or trade groups or associations or just good old-fashioned businesses? And, and so do I know anybody that works in that business? So that's where the people and places come together. That's the proximity principle. So here's how you do it on LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is a wonderful source of information. I would not rely completely on LinkedIn. Whoops, I dropped my pencil. I would not completely rely on LinkedIn for the connection part of it. Let me explain. Again, big fan of LinkedIn. LinkedIn ought to be sponsoring my program, to be honest with you. All right? Uh, but they aren't. But here's the deal. Tons of great information about LinkedIn. You can see who the person is, the connections, the mutual connections. And, and I'm okay with you reaching out on LinkedIn, but that's where I think the mistake is made where people only rely on, well, I'm going to send the communication through LinkedIn. Some people don't check that stuff. Some people don't really want to engage with that. It's just kind of they're there for their own information. And this is why I say it's wonderful information. Don't rely on it solely for connection. So I go to LinkedIn and I see, oh, I know this person and we've got this mutual connection. I've got all this going on. But now I'm going to reach out to them through those mutual connections if they're strong enough. Hey, can you get me their email? Can you get me their office address? All right, I want to send them a handwritten note. Uh, can you give me their number? I'd like to call them. You get the cell phone, I'd love to text them. And you go that way. And uh, so that's how you use LinkedIn. And so it's, it's, it's just a, a vast treasure trove of information so you can make true connection. 
Uh, Homestead Fabricator said, on your should I quit my job quiz, I scored a 40 in the wrong role and 29 in the wrong place. How should I go about quitting my job? Uh, strategically is how you quit your job. Here's what I mean. Number one, if we need the income of the current job we want to quit, don't quit until you've replaced the income. There's no reason to take a bad situation and make it worse. And you can be in a bad job. And if you just let your emotions rule you and you walk and you don't have a job to walk into and there is some type of delay, it causes a bad situation to go worse. It's just not good. All right. And then you got all this pressure financially, which will force you into an even more stressful decision point. It's not necessary. So the way you do it is strategically, let's go find something else. When we find something else, now we're ready to quit. And the way we do it is with class. Put yourself in the employer's shoes. If you were them and someone was going to resign, how would you want them to do it? What do you think is the right way to do it? And I think that includes you really being a good steward. And if they're going to have to replace you, leave well, not just in with kindness and gratitude, but also, you know what? Uh, I've put these notes together on what I do. I put a one-page report on what to do, how to do it, based on how I've been able to do it. I think this will help the next person, help you hire the right person. That's class. So that's all you got to do. 844-747-2577 is the number. Okay, I want to teach for just a few minutes here on the most important friend to have. Now, I think you know friends are so vitally important. We know from Harvard Research that 95% of your success or failure, folks, listen to this. 95% of your success or failure in life is directly related to the people you spend the most time with. This isn't just for kids, moms and dads. This is also you. Let me also throw into that, that this isn't just friends. This is also family. We all have got some family members that if we're very honest, while we do love them, they suck the ever-living life out of us. They drag us down. So it's time to do an assessment here. All right? However, that's the data on the importance of relationships. Now, I believe that all of us need at least one friend, and this type of friend I believe is the most important type of friend for all of us and us maximizing our potential on this planet. And this is the person. They are the friend who, whether you want them to or not, they're always challenging you. Now, let me explain what I mean. I don't mean challenge in a negative way, like they're just, oh, gosh, they challenge me. No, 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 no. They're constantly going, hey, how you doing in this area of your life? You making progress? You doing well? How, how are things going? You setting some goals? Are you winning? And I got to tell you, the reason that I'm sharing this today is, is because I know how rare this is. Th th there's not a lot of these people on the planet. In fact, I think they are the extreme minority in life. Because if I want you, I want you to really stop for just a second. I want you to think about this. How many of you watching right now have got a friend in your life who, whether you ask them to, remind them to or not, they are just always that challenger in a good way. They're just always going, hey, how you doing? You doing well in this area? Are you growing in this area? Are you eating right? How's your relationship with your wife? How, you, how are you doing with your kids? Are you growing? What are you dreaming about? See, here's the deal. That's a rare deal. So in some ways, I'm going to acknowledge that you will have to almost try to create this friend. I think there are personality types who, if you come up to them and you say, I need you to be this person. So I'm going to share some things that I want to work on, that I want to uh, see growth in my life. And, and again, this is relationally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, professionally. And you can go to them and go, now listen, I'm going to share this stuff with you because I want you, 
I think you're this type of person. I don't want to burden you on this, but if you're game for this, when you talk to me on a regular basis, I want you to ask me. I want you to challenge me. Folks, this is a game changer. But I'm going to tell you, there's not a lot of these people walking around, so they're rare animals, right? But if you find them, love on them, and get them connected deeply into your life because they are a gift. They are a gift. I think of this as the iron sharpening iron. They they are the sword to your sword. They are they are going to be this clashing combustion. Joe, I know you hate that, but you're just gonna have to deal with it. Uh, I, when I make those noises, he, he he jumps in the studio back there. There he is. Wave at everybody, Joe. There he is. Uh, that that clashing doesn't have to be negative. It's it needs to be positive, and it's creating sparks sparking action sparking change that's what i'm talking about so they're rare but you can find them and and i believe they're floating around you some of them do it instinctively and others you have to coach them into it and say i'm giving you this permission will you do it and some of those people go "Ooh, i'm in <laughs> they like it and listen it's going to be uncomfortable at first, but I'm telling you, it's so good. So good. And they turn into a person who's not just challenging you on your goals, but you can take an idea to them and they're not going to be the yes man. They're going to go, I want to challenge that a little bit. I got questions. Be a little bit of a devil's advocate. And again, that's the iron sharpening iron and the sparks that are happening. And I'm telling you, sparks are good. One final question on this topic, and we'll move back to the phones. I want you to be really honest with yourself. When was the last time you even had a conversation like this with somebody who cared about you enough to challenge you, or you sought out somebody to challenge you? When was the last time you created sparks? If it's been a while, it's time for a wake-up call. Your growth is highly dependent on you putting yourself in a situation where you're being challenged by other people, creating sparks. If you got no spark in your life, it's because you're not being challenged. Think on that. 844-747-2577. couple quick deals I'm going to tell you about at KenColeman.com. The team has done a great job. You ready? The Proximity Principle. We talked a little bit about it in today's program. It's my number one Wall Street Journal bestselling book. Now you can get all three formats, the hard copy with an autograph, the ebook for you device readers, right? And the audiobook for those of you who like to listen while you're in the car or on the treadmill or on the tractor. All three formats, one low price of $25. Only place you can get that is at KenColeman.com. And then our very, very popular Get Higher Digital course. This is an 11-part 11 ser 11 video series I'm teaching on how to get hired, how to stand out in the millions and millions and millions of people that are looking for a job right now. All you need is a computer, tablet, or phone to watch. You have unlimited replays. And you ready for this? It's only $20. Are you willing to spend $20 to invest in your future or $20 to invest in a friend or family member's future who they're struggling to get hired right now? The Get Hired Digital Course, KenColeman.com in our store. Go check it out. All right, let's go to, oh my gosh, am I reading this correctly? Qatar, a long way away. Thank you, Joe. Qatar, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for making sure I'm hooked on phonics. Uh, Will is joining us in Qatar. Will, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, I appreciate it, Ken. Yeah, you got you got it right. There were two options. You could have said Qatar or Qatar. Well, I um, said yeah, I so said Qatar. So I, what do I know? Yeah, it was my best guess. It's like Kmart. Yeah, there you go, Qatar. All right. So, uh, are you uh, serving in the military? I am. As a matter of fact, so I'm a, I'm a reservist. I'm on orders. Oh, well, thank um, you for I your service, to, by the to, way. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. Thank you for paying taxes. Yes, indeed. Uh, it, so I called in, so I'm a reservist. So how it works as a reservist, we mobilize uh, on orders, and then typically we return back 
to our civilian jobs. I've been on orders for quite some time, just jumping from orders to orders. Um, I, I called in to, to Dave, uh, your boss, a couple weeks back um, regarding uh, Financial Peace University. So I'm currently on baby step two, and it'll be right down to the wire to paying off all debt by the time I leave Qatar. Um, and I'm concerned about having a long-term, and I say long-term, which in the military is like a year and beyond. It's not necessarily, uh, you know, five or 10 years, but it could be any, a one year could be a, uh, a long-term job. Um, I've applied for three different jobs. Um, one of them is a DOD government, uh, GS 12 job. So kind of civilian, but within the department of defense. And I did a phone interview, but I haven't heard anything back from that in two weeks. And then I've also applied for another deployment in Germany. And I've met the prerequisite qualifications, but haven't heard anything back. And then finally, I've applied for another military uniform job there in North Carolina, where I live. And I made it through the initial sifting of qualified people. But again, I haven't heard anything back. And I feel like I'm just going to jump on whatever gets put on, you know, put gets put before me first. And I don't know if that's the right decision. No, it's not the right decision. So don't be discouraged. Okay. <laughs> how how long has it been since the? You told me that it's been two weeks on the first one. Then you gave me two more job applications. How long has it been since those two? So for the second one, the Germany one, when I reached out before I applied, I reached out to the point of contact uh, and had some good email traffic with them. Uh, and then as soon as I applied, it was just radio silence, no communication. Okay. And what about the third one? The third one? Yeah, um, North Carolina. I, yeah, North Carolina. I applied for it, and then uh, it's been a week since I've touched base with yeah. uh, All right, my estimate, the, the POC. Yeah, here's the deal. You just need to chill, and I know it's hard. I mean, waiting is exhausting. I get it. It's agonizing. But... What, a, what other choice do you have? If you overdo it, then they're like, this dude's desperate. There's got to be a reason for that, and so we're not interested, right? So you just got to kind of chill. Okay. All right, now, chill on those. Keep applying. Keep looking. Use the proximity principle. Try to find some connections in the military that you have met where people know you and can endorse you, and they may know somebody in connection to these jobs. And it's not just you applying before you ever apply, they're making a connection and saying, let me tell you about Will. So you got to just, you got to do it the right way, the smart way. Okay. And I'm going to give you a copy of my book, The Proximity Principle. Okay. And you've got to read it and do it. It, it is all about your web of connections, Will. And when you've got a connection okay. to a gig and the people find out about you before you apply, it it, it 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 will raise the opportunity for you. It changes everything in the sense of you're no longer this anonymous person who nobody knows, and you're only relying on the resume. Do you understand what I'm saying? I I do. Yeah, and so you got to do that. Now, here's the deal. You said, Ken, I feel like I'm in a position where I'm going to take the first thing brought to me. Is that a bad idea? And you laughed when I immediately went, yeah, it's a bad idea, because here's the deal. <laughs> You've got some time, and you're active right now. How much time do you have before you're leaving Qatar? 54 days. Okay. So 54 days. You're already actively doing things, okay, to get seen. And I know you go, gosh, 54 days, that's that's ticking pretty quickly. But the reality is, is that you just have to step up your activity and you're going to get to a point where you're leaving with something ready to go or you're leaving with some opportunities to interview or you're leaving with a gig in the back. That's your reality. And all three of those options still require you to be super active. And and you're looking for a job like, you're, like your pants are on fire, right? But I don't know that you have to, in fact, I just don't believe you have to take the first thing offered unless you're in a really tough financial position. Are you in a tough financial position? Uh, we bought the house. <laughs> we bought too much house. We're, in, we're not house poor right now because we both work, but uh, 
if I don't work, we will be very house poor. Okay, and that's in North Carolina? Correct. How much is the house worth? Uh, the house uh, was purchased last year at uh, four four hundred and fifteen thousand. What's it? Okay, and so um, you don't have you don't even you don't have your two. You take a, a hit on capital gains tax. Could you sell it for a profit right now? Uh, no, not with seller fees. No. Okay, and what were you doing before you went to Qatar? Uh, I wasn't on another set of orders. I've just been, it's referred like orders, jumping, chasing, hopping. Okay. So, so, but I see that confuses me because you said you were a reservist. So you didn't have another job. in yeah, Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You're correct. No civilian job. I've been activated. Okay. Um, an activated reservist All for right. the last three years. Okay. So here's what, so here's what you'd have to do. Now, my advice doesn't change. Okay, but what what I do know is is that you've got enough connections in North Carolina that if a military job does not come through before fifty four days from now, um, you need to have a backup plan in the form of a day job, right? Where you you're you're driving for right. UPS or you're doing this or you're doing this or you're you know whatever you're working two jobs because that's the financial pressure you're under. So you would go back to North Carolina. If you don't have anything in 54 days, you're still working the pipeline, filling the pipeline up. But if you don't have anything, you're going to go do one or two gigs, just straight up day job to keep money coming in. So start working that angle as well. And, I, and I'm and i very confident there's still work for you to do, even if it's, like I said, a couple of jobs to make up the one salary. And then, you know, opportunities are going to come. But you got to really work your web of connections. Hang on the line. We're going to get you a copy of... My best-selling book, The Proximity Principle. Please give him the copy, whatever one he wants, ebook, hard copy, or audiobook. And um, and 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 this is this is about intensity. All right. Uh, I I thought he was maybe in the five to six month range, maybe a year. It's fifty four days, so that is a tighter timeline. But there is. This is where you fast forward the process when you can find a connection. Some of you go, Ken, there's no way I can find it. That's just not true. It's just good old-fashioned hustle. Between social media, between relationships, family, long-term acquaintances, connections in the military, if you're applying for military jobs, you've got to sit down and just have a fun little exercise. How many people are there between me and the hiring manager, the hiring leader in that situation? Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. If you're young enough to not know what that is, go look it up. It's a fun little game. And by the way, it works. And so that's what you've got to do. And you've got to do it with intensity. And then you have the backup plan. All right? We're from North Carolina. I don't want to have anything. So what's my backup plan, folks? This is all he's got to do. It's what you have to do. I've got to have a short-term plan sometimes as a backup so that I can stay afloat, stay on the path, Stay alive, in essence, allowing me to then step onto the long-term path. So don't put all your eggs in the long-term basket. Sometimes a life we got to adjust. And that, sometimes, is the very thing we need to do. I found many times when I've had delays, detours, and I've had to adjust, it was in the adjustment season, the pivot, if you will, just staying with it, that some of the great breakthroughs happen, and as a result, I learned more about myself. I learned more about what I wanted to do. And so don't take the detour. Don't take the adjustment, the short-term plan, as a negative that it's going backwards. No, you're still in the game. And that's what all the great men and women do. They stay in the game. My time is almost up. But before I let you go, you matter and you do have what it takes. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, this is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on.